everyone. Welcome to Breakthrough Conversations. My name is Danielle Perry and I am the host. You should know by now if you tune into this podcast that I'm excited that you're tuned in again today for a new episode. And if this is your first time, this is a Christian podcast which features people of all ages and they share a bit of their story about how God has helped them to overcome a difficult challenge, situation, or a season in their lives, or maybe they're on their way to overcoming with God's help. And they do share authentically. Well, I am super excited to share this episode today because today's guest has actually known me probably since I was a baby, now that I think about it. And he blessed me by coming onto this podcast to share a bit of his story. And he's none other than Mr. Glenn Wiggins. And the title of this episode is Being a Husband and Dad Caring for My Mom with Alzheimer's. I know others who are currently caring for loved ones with this disease, and they have shared that it is not easy. So I pray that if there's anyone out there who can relate to Glenn, um, that you will watch this episode. Uh, Be encouraged. Know that God is with you and your loved one. And I pray that you don't lose hope. I pray that you don't lose faith. I know that it's very hard. I know that it's challenging, but remember nothing is ever too hard for the Lord and know that he's with you. He's with your loved one in this trying time. So be ready to hear from someone who I'm sure you're going to say, yep, I can relate to that. Yep, that has happened to me or that has happened to my loved one. So y'all here it is without further ado. This is episode 41, part one. Enjoy and be blessed. And he's none other than Mr. Glenn Wiggins. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Glenn. Hey, Danielle. <laughs> How are you? I'm well. I'm well. Good, good. Mm-hmm. And for those of you who don't know, this is one of my youth leaders from Edgewood Baptist Church, the okay. church that I grew up in. <laughs> um, him and his wife led the youth ministry there, and I was a part of that ministry. And so it's so good to have you here mm-hmm. in my home on the podcast. It's just it's great to be here. It's amazing. Yes. <laughs> so um, I have you on today, Glenn, to um, talk about being a husband and father mm-hmm. while caring for my while caring, excuse me, for your mom with Alzheimer's. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, so before we <laughs> hop into the questions, I want you to introduce yourself and just tell us a little bit about who you are. Okay. Uh, well, I'm Glenn Wiggins. Um Let's see. I'll start with, uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I, uh, I grew up in, uh, Danielle already mentioned, Edgewood Baptist Church in Washington, D.C., so I've lived there my entire life. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I went to, uh, we spent most of our weekends at church, and, and a lot of that was with my mom. I, mm-hmm. I'm the youngest of uh, four brothers. Okay. Um, uh, my my dad went to church later in li- life, <laughs> later in life. Uh-huh. So we weren't always at church together, but uh, mm-hmm. I was always there with mom. <laughs> okay. So, um, and then I uh, I went to college. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I'm kind of brushing through it because I don't want to <laughs> hang too long. But but I did uh, just just because you mentioned Edgewood, mm-hmm. I did. I uh, grew up there, mm-hmm. I sang in the choir, mm-hmm. did the usher board, mm-hmm. we went to Sunday school, <laughs> uh, so a lot of weekends there, um, and, and sometimes weeknights, yeah. uh-huh. <laughs> so, um, and I, I went uh, went there throughout my high school, I, even when I came home for college, I was there, when I, I got married there, my wife attended, and we had our first few children yeah. there, so I was there for 35 years before wow. we transitioned to a new new church, um, Zion Church, uh, in, in land, uh, well, it's just Zion Church, it's in several places, uh-huh, so, uh-huh. but it was in Landover when we, when we attended, mm-hmm. um, and, um, Later, you know, I, my my mom was always a part of my life. I, you know, I, I was the baby, so I always mm-hmm. felt I I, I I had a special relationship with her. Okay. Uh, even even my dad told me when I was very young, uh, like when I was five, he's mm-hmm. he's like, "You're gonna take care of your mother." Mm-hmm. And you know, I didn't mean anything to me at that time, mm-hmm. but. It stuck with me, okay. and I always, always took care of her. So, mm-hmm. uh, well, I always was there for her, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and she's always there for me, of course. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow, wow. <laughs> so, um, I kind of knew 
that you grew up in Edgewood because my grandma has some old pictures <laughs> <laughs> from Edgewood. And I would say, yeah. oh, Glenn looks like maybe he was like a teenager there. Like he was here way back when, you know. So mm-hmm. um, so I think I was kind of familiar with that. So you grew up in Edgewood from the time you were a little boy up until, yeah. like you said, 35, yeah. right? Back, back your, your aunt would always tell me. She said, I knew you from the womb. Really? Aunt <laughs> yeah. Dolores? Dolores, Yeah, yes. wow. That's amazing. <laughs> wow. So, again, it's just interesting that you were once a youth mm-hmm. at Edgewood. Yeah. And then eventually I come in the pictures somewhere down the line and I become a youth uh-huh. and you and your wife become the youth ministers. Yeah. So, yeah. at what age did you all take on that role? Um... Well, so so Reverend Jones was the youth pastor, mm-hmm. and even even late in high school, you know, my role kind of transitioned to not. Just, and, and my mom was very significant too. She mm-hmm. she she went on most of the retreats and things mm-hmm, like that, mm-hmm. and our Friday night youth meetings. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, we had I guess we had like officers and things like that. Mm-hmm. So we were we were we were being trained to do the things to support the younger mm-hmm, ones mm-hmm. coming up uh for uh you know behind us mm-hmm. so um i feel like i was doing it like from high school up oh, wow. <laughs> but um you know of course of college i, I was away mm-hmm. uh for 5 years actually five and a half years mm-hmm. so but when I came back uh i kind of jumped right back into it mm-hmm. and and my wife was at a, my fiance Mm -hmm. (laughs) my my wife was uh at another church okay uh we had a very uh we started dating in february of 95 and we were married by december of 95 so (laughs) yeah it was a a very very quick i don't know relationship Uh but we've uh been together for it'll be 28 years wow wow Hope I got that right. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you got it right, Alice. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, uh, but she she was ready to to get involved. She was very involved at her church, mm-hmm. and and she had decided even before we got married to join uh, Edgewood, mm-hmm. and we. Um, I mean, it, it kind of she kind of just jumped in, and we mm-hmm. rolled. She joined the choir. We did yeah. youth group, and we were doing retreats together. She, yeah. So we were kind of taking on the roles. The the roles of you know uh, the higher level roles where you're actually controlling the money you know mm-hmm. you're collecting mm-hmm. money you're mm-hmm. you're budgeting mm-hmm. you're getting the bus you're getting the, mm-hmm. you know you're finding mm-hmm. the facility so it it was very very exciting you know we yeah. actually were going out to sites and and uh, picking them out but okay. you know the the every day or the the more you know the, the other activities that went along with it we were planning those yeah, too so yeah wow yeah. wow mm-hmm. and you mm-hmm. guys were like you said, in your early 20s? Early 20s. Early 20s. So, wow. Yep, yep. So this this is very meaningful for me in this season because my husband and I are youth ministers, okay. right? All right. So we actually just had a youth event here at the house last oh, night. Oh, okay. Awesome. <laughs> so we woke awesome. up like uh, kind of groggy, <laughs> Wait a minute, which is why I said, <laughs> let me actually text Glenn because if I don't need to prepare this morning, then I'll stay in a bit. Well, bless you. But, um, <laughs> But yeah, um, and so when I look back at just the impact that you all had in my life, and I'm sure many of the other youth at the time, Mm -hmm. I see that it took a lot of work, and I'm sure it took a lot of work for you guys, because it's a huge responsibility. Yeah, it is. It is. It's a huge responsibility, so thank you. you can't do it alone. (laughs) Yeah, you can't. You can't. You definitely need God's help, but you need some people (laughs) working with you. Yes, yes. And and we were were blessed to have that as well. Yeah, yeah. A lot of of good folks. Wow, 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 wow. That's a blessing. So, okay, so you grew up in church, Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. and so you always had a foundation in the Lord. Because yes. you were in church yes. young. Yes. Um, I want you to kind of share what are some memories you remember with your mom as a young boy? So, um, again, um, well, well, some of some of my fondest memories, I, I'll say as a family okay. uh, growing up, is that we didn't have a lot of family vacations, mm-hmm. but, and, and, you know, I, I think, I think, one of the things that you know you don't appreciate growing up, but we we had a lot of 
stability. weren't We didn't weren't had a lot of money. Didn't mm-hmm. have a lot of money. And sometimes mm-hmm. things were tough for various reasons. Mm-hmm. But it was always mom and dad were there, and family was there. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. uh, so we, we we went on our couple of vacations. Mm-hmm. We we were you know sleeping in you know it was six of us. Somehow we were in in a hotel room with two beds and a cot mm-hmm. and we made it work, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So yeah. it's like my fondest memory. And, and we, we, we did a couple of others where we visited folks in North Carolina mm-hmm. and, and, you know, we were sleeping on sofas and, you know, it's just getting in the car, going on a trip. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And, um, and always tried to make uh, Christmas time special okay. in the family. So mm-hmm. that's when we would see the grandparents and, and, mm-hmm. and other family members. So, um, those were special times, yeah. but, um, yeah, like, like you, I don't know if you've even met my brothers. I'm not sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, coming up, uh, I, I would always definitely be the one going to church with mom. Okay. Uh, my brothers did for a time, but when they got of, of a certain age, mm-hmm. they were, you know, they, they were go- doing other things mm-hmm, or, mm-hmm. or playing tennis with my dad or something mm-hmm. like that. But I... I didn't mind it, but I was always the one who was with mom. Okay. <laughs> so, and again, I was at Edgewood until I was 35. Mm-hmm. So, um, um, so I just remember being with her a lot. She mm-hmm. eventually, I, I'm, I'm getting way off the topic, but mm-hmm. I'll just keep talking. Okay. But, you know, at, at, at my dad died in 94. Okay. So not long. I graduated in December 93 and he, he passed shortly after that. So we were living with, my mom when we got married and actually Sydney was born in the house that that you know I, oh, wow. I grew up in for, okay. for a good deal then we moved out not long we moved out before Wesley was born so okay um but um I forgot where I was going with that <laughs> <laughs> I think but you, but yeah, yeah it, I, I think it's kind of that taking care of mom thing even yeah. though I was living with her mm-hmm. it was just us and, and and her at the time and my grandmother lived there for a while but uh, as we, when we went on vacations mm-hmm. with me and Allison and our children, mm-hmm. when we could, she would go with us. Okay. So it, it was just, you know, something that I, you know, wanted to do. I wanted her to, to be close. Yeah. And, and now that she was a widow and, you know, yeah. <clears throat> wanted yeah. to make sure that she was getting taken care of, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, absolutely. And it was, it was a blessing to have her go with us. Yeah. And, and, and you know, be, be available because <clears throat> you know uh she she has other grandchildren mm-hmm. <laughs> so right. so you know you can't assume the, and other children if you know you mm-hmm. know what I mean so mm-hmm. you can't assume that you know she'll always you know, she couldn't always do it but right but it was just just great having her with us a lot of the time so. yeah mm-hmm. absolutely um so when you met Allison I was trying to um, have you go back down memory lane a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> when you met Allison, do you remember um, at what point she met your mom and what their interaction was like? Um, I don't. I don't necessarily remember that. And, okay. and as I, I as I mentioned, things happen kind of quickly. Right. <laughs> so um, I met Allison. Uh, I don't know if you remember uh, Yolanda. Uh, at the time, I'm trying to remember her name because she's got married Rochester. Uh, Not really. Maybe if I see your face. In any case, uh-huh. she went to school with Allison. <laughs> okay. But she was attending church at Edgewood at the time. Okay. So that's how the connection was made. Okay. Um, but I was in college when I met her, and I definitely wasn't trying to have any kind of long distance anything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, and I think she was in college as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, uh, again, it happened quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh, I came home from college about a year after that. It took me, it took me a while to get a job after college. So uh-huh. I really wasn't trying to be in a relationship. <laughs> in a relationship right? You were focused I, trying I to get a like job. I feel like here I am living at home with my mom and, and Yeah. I'm not ready. Yeah. <laughs> so uh-huh. when I was ready, I, I was ready. Uh-huh. So, so, um, I mean, she met her right away mm-hmm. and she came to church, mm-hmm. you know, so we were seeing each other all the time. It was yeah. just like quick, yeah. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. and, and it was, you know, she welcomed her with open arms. Yeah. So, 
Yep. Yeah. I, I do remember, I was telling you before we started, um, how I still have memories of things that I wouldn't think I would remember. Okay. That I attended. <laughs> okay. For those who don't know, I attended Edgewood from the day I was born up until right before ninth grade. Mm-hmm. Um, but I still have a lot of memories about the church. And I do remember when you got married. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, and I remember <clears throat> my grandmother. So <laughs> do you remember um, the uh, the area, the entrance, where we would have pictures up of the members who just joined? The uh-huh. church. Uh-huh. So I remember seeing Allison's picture oh, okay. on there. Okay. Right? And somewhere along the line, I remember grandma saying, you know, that at some point you guys got married or, you know, whatever, whatever. And so I just remember those moments. And again, okay. I remember when um, just seeing you now as a couple and again, just the youth retreats and you guys leading them together. So I remember that, which is so crazy to me mm-hmm. because y'all got married in. 95. 95. I was only about eight or nine. (laughs) Oh. So I don't know. I just remember stuff like that. I don't know why I think you were were older. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But you did come back, right? Uh, no. No, well, eight or or nine, so you were still coming. Yeah, I was still coming. I I left around maybe 12 or 13, 12 or 13 years old. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I wasn't, I was always kind of the younger one. Okay. Who was in your age group? I know so, this is not for the camera. I know. It's okay. Monier, Monier, okay. Lolita, but even they okay. were a couple years older than me. Oh, okay. So I was okay. always kind of the younger okay. one. Okay. And I was in the junior choir while everyone else was is in P.M. Like, Parker. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. I thought yeah. sure you sang with P.M. Parker for, I did, for a little but it bit. Was a, it was a short oh, time. A short time. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so... So, yeah, and I remember, of course, your mom, um, piano player, Mm -hmm. really great piano player, Mm -hmm. um, and she was always so kind, Mm -hmm. always so kind to me, always smiling. (laughs) She had an infectious smile, Mm -hmm. Um, and I... (sighs) Think of Edgewood, she's definitely one of the people that comes to mind as one of the first people that Mm -hmm. I remember. Mm -hmm. Um, So speaking of that, right, Mm -hmm. um, when you talk about your mom and, you know, when you and Allison got married, you lived with your mom for a while. Mm -hmm. Um, What was just it like? What was the transition like from single to married uh, with your mom and then also eventually having Sydney and how involved was your mom within helping to raise Sydney at the time? Um, I mean, it wasn't all natural. I, I, I would say, you know, I had to be uh, cognizant of what Allison was going through as well mm-hmm. because she, she was moving into an, another household mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, things that were normal to me weren't normal, you know, for her. Mm-hmm. So, um, I mean, it, it wasn't a, 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 a hard transition, mm-hmm. but it, you know, I think I learned things about just people in general mm-hmm. of, of, you know, you know, mom likes to, you know, knock on the door in the morning and, <laughs> And okay. Allison was like, Mm-mm. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so, but for the most part, it was it it, it was a, it was a smooth transition. Okay. Um, you know, Allison might might have some other stories that that, <laughs> that uh, you know. But but you know, having having Sydney there, like we stayed in the basement, and okay. we had uh, we had two rooms down there, mm-hmm. and we fixed up Sydney's room for mm-hmm. her, and mm-hmm. you know, all the all the standard things she would do. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, mom was definitely there. My, my grandmother was still living at the time mm-hmm. that, that Sydney was born. So we, we all were sitting in the living room when Sydney took her first steps and we were all like, oh, wow. you yeah. know, <laughs> so it, it, you know, it was, it was, it was nice having that, you know, having them there to, yeah. to witness that. And, Absolutely. And she's, my grandmother died before. We were already we we had bought a house, but we're waiting for it to get done. And she mm-hmm. died right before we moved out. So that was kind mm. of it's like now we're leaving mom by herself. Yeah. So you know, so and we weren't far away. You know, okay. if you know DC, we're you know, I've always lived at one end or the other of Mississippi Avenue. So I, okay. I still <laughs> I still do. So it, she wasn't far away, mm-hmm. which was which was good for me. So to you know, can, can check on her. But mm-hmm. her living alone after. I don't think she ever lived alone in her life. Mm. Uh, you know, she had f- 
four siblings. Uh, and then when she left the house, she was married to my dad. And mm-hmm. then she had four boys. Mm-hmm. And then so this was actually the first time she was living by herself. So wow. that, that kind of made, made me sad, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. you know, because that, that wasn't the plan. But, you know, God had a plan. Yeah, so. yeah he had a yeah. plan. Yeah. yeah. So you and Allison move out. Mm-hmm. Um, by this time, you have two kids, you said, Well, right? we, well, we had on one on the way. Okay. Yeah. So Sydney and one on the way. Yeah. Um, and did you and Allison always plan to have a large family? I, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. We, we wanted, wanted kids. Okay. We, we, wanted, we wanted five. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> but after three, we said, I said, okay, let's, let's think about this. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and we took a break. Okay. And, and we said, okay, let's have one more. Okay. But, but and then call it quits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so okay. That, that's what we did. Okay. So, and yeah. for those who don't know, um, your children's names and ages now. Okay. Uh, Sydney's, uh, she'll be 25. Mm-hmm. Uh, John Wesley is 23. Uh, Janae is 21. Mm-hmm. And Gianna, Gigi, is 16. Wow. Yeah, so we got three out of college as of May, <laughs> and then wow. one, one, uh, two more years of high school left. Wow. Mm-hmm. So, okay, <laughs> I'm just trying to wrap my mind around. I'm thinking about all the Christmas pictures. Uh huh. Uh-huh, <laughs> right. Uh huh. The this the matriculation of just how they were so small, and now mm-hmm. they're they're young adults, or one is on the way to becoming a young adult. That's that's amazing. So. You and John Wesley were the only guys in the mm-hmm. house. Yeah. How how yeah. is that? Well, uh, <laughs> I, we call it payback because uh, <laughs> my mom was the only uh, female in the house for so long. Uh-huh. And I don't know if you know this story, but uh, two of my brothers each had three girls. Oh wow! So actually, all of us had three girls. I just had one more. I had a boy as wow. well. Wow! So we we all learned how to live in a house with. All of you know, majority of the opposite uh-huh. sex. So. All of the <laughs> so. estrogen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you just sit back and say, "Okay, <laughs> right. you got it." I love it. I love it. So still outnumbered today, but yeah. that's okay. Uh-huh. Right, right. Um, do you remember uh, any fun, just activities, things that, as a family with all of your children, that you all did with your mom? Um, I, I mentioned vacation, so mm-hmm. that it was, it was nice taking vacations mm-hmm. uh, with her. I mean, it also allowed me and Allison to sometimes <laughs> do something mm-hmm. w- without mm-hmm. the kids. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it was mostly a together thing. And we, you know, mostly beach trips and things like that. Mm-hmm. So, um, but every every Christmas, we made sure we we got to mm-hmm. uh, Allison's family and my family, mm-hmm. and and the tradition was the first stop on. Uh, Christmas morning was at Grandma Wiggins' house, okay. and then you know other other family would come later. But that was just a tradition that that was built. Yeah. But we we went to Edgewood with her for a long time. Yeah. Uh, so we, you know the kids were seeing her, mm-hmm. at least the kids that were born. <laughs> you right. know, every, every week. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um. So it she she was uh, she was there. You mm-hmm, know. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's it's funny that it's kind of skipping ahead a bit mm-hmm. uh, w- when she did move in with us, mm-hmm. um, and like you know, after she passed, uh, even even when she lived with us, mm-hmm. but the kids remember her as as having Alzheimer's than anything else. Okay. So, especially the the, the younger ones, and mm-hmm. they're like, wow. I didn't really know grandma mm. before. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. b- before, uh, you know, Alzheimer's. So mm-hmm. it's it's hard to, <laughs> okay. to think back that far. So yeah. even, the, even the older kids, they were so young. It was just like, yeah, grandma was, was cool, you know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. but okay. they, they don't, they don't really know, remember a lot. Okay. Yeah. So, so when did she actually, when was she diagnosed with it? So, um, and I, I was trying to get the timeline together, uh-huh. and I was actually talking with with Allison about it. We, you know, there there are signs, but th- those are signs. You know, mem- memory lapses are not all. You know, I have memory lapses. Right, right. Uh, so you just figure as you get older, you you forget stuff. But mm-hmm. you know, she started 
kind of repeating things. Mm. And so, so her actual diagnosis, uh, I'm going to go back. Uh, she moved in with us in 20, I'll, I'll talk about that a bit. Mm-hmm. But when we moved in together, that was 2014. Okay. Um, when she was diagnosed, we lived in a three bedroom townhouse with four kids. Oh, wow. So there was no moving in. Right. <laughs> that, that, that just wasn't, right. there wasn't an option. Um, mm-hmm. And the doctor, um, I think when mom was diagnosed, it, she didn't, she didn't share it with any of her sons right away. Mm. It, it was very awkward because, not awkward, but I, I heard from my sister-in-law mm. and I was like, what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's, it's official. Right. It's, you know, uh, uh, but I think I, I, I'm not sure why that was, mm-hmm. but, um, um, but when we found out, you know, we started talking about it. Mm-hmm. She was still pretty, um, coherent, coherent, yeah. all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. So, so once we started talking about it and she, you know, she, there was a point she said, yeah, the doctor says I don't, I shouldn't live alone. Uh, this time she had moved to, um, I don't know, uh, she, she was going to Trinity University. Mm-hmm. She got her degree, I think it was in 2008. Okay. So she was really looking to uh, utilize mm-hmm. her degree. Mm-hmm. Um, but she was never able to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think it was because of, the mm-hmm. Alzheimer's, but mm-hmm. I I didn't know to what level or what extent or you know she mm-hmm. was doing a lot of volunteer work and things like that which was good mm-hmm. but she really wanted to do counseling and, and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so when she was diagnosed, we we had a house that I knew couldn't accommodate, and you know we really had to take a step on. It, we we had wanted to move because it was it was crowded mm-hmm. already. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, <clears throat> But now we were thinking, okay, now we have to find a house that's big enough that the kids aren't on top of each other mm-hmm. and that mom has some space. Mm-hmm. And that's and, and we, we've lived in D.C., both me and Allison, all our lives. Mm-hmm. And we looked at places outside of D.C., but it just, mm-hmm. we knew we needed to live in D.C., not, not sure why. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. we, we love it and we hate it at the same time. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's that type of relationship uh-huh. with D.C., it, but, but we wouldn't want to be anywhere else, okay. at least that, at this uh-huh. point in our lives. So, mm-hmm. um, so, you know, we didn't know where we were going to find a house mm-hmm. because we figured we, we needed at least five bedrooms. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and and there's there's a big price tag with that too. Right, so, right. but you know, we looked for for a good for a good while. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say seven months, and we were looking at you know DC had this program where you could buy a house and renovate it before you move in and mm-hmm. put all those costs together. It okay. looks, looked like a good deal, and we found we got close with a couple houses, mm-hmm. but. It it was it was almost daunting. Like this house is old. Mm-hmm. They say it's got good bones. Whatever that means, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. But after you start doing work on it, what are they going to find out? Yeah, and yep. it's like, ah. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, we knew we had to do something. Mm-hmm. And and you know, I all I can say is God bless us with a house right around the corner from where we were, mm. and we you know. We could afford it, mm-hmm. <laughs> so Where's and that? it was five bedrooms, yeah, yeah. and so it, I, I literally moved in a minivan because it was so close. I would just move things, mm-hmm. you know, bit by bit. Mm-hmm. I mean, I had help, but we didn't, you know. It, it was so close. I was like, we're not going to rent a whole truck just to to do this, right? You right. know. So, uh, but anyway, um, so when she, so we 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 were blessed. We 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 moved into the house mm-hmm. in July that year, and uh, had you know. Moved her in a couple weeks later, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and just just went from there. You and know? you said that was about 2014. 2014. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, so it was a few years prior that you all found out about the diagnosis. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, about a yeah, few years prior. Yeah, yeah. Um. So you said as far as the signs go, it's like everybody kind of forgets things. You know, not really thinking yeah, much yeah. of it. And then your your sister in law, you found out found out through her about yeah, the diagnosis, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. That, I, I just remember that in my head, like, 
Yeah. Why didn't she tell anybody? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, you yeah. know, and and maybe she did, but I, I'm I'm the youngest, so I uh, being the youngest, sometimes I'm the I'm the last to, to oh, know, to, to and know, I always yeah. fuss about that. When yeah, I'm, I'm the last to know. Like, right. When I was in college, my mom broke her ankle in like three places. Oh wow! Right, and back uh-huh. then we didn't have cell phones and all right. that. Right. So I would call every week or so, uh-huh. and and I called home. I think it was I would call every two weeks. Uh huh. And, and and my mom had broke her ankle in two places, and she was, you know, in the bed healing. And I call home, and, and, and I call home, and I find out that way. Right. And I felt like somebody should have called me yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and let me right. know. Yeah. But when I called, you know, it was, it was a chill conversation. And I think my brother was like, yeah, Mom, uh, she slipped uh, a couple weeks ago or, you know, last uh-huh. week. And she had, you know, she's in a cast. And, so I, I didn't know, I don't know what the situation was, uh-huh. uh, but I just felt like, here we go again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, right, you know? right. So, yeah, kind of being the last to find out. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, but, I mean, we immediately went into, you know, planning and prepping for mm-hmm. what needed to be done. Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. Um, But, again, like, I think it was the, the conversations where she would, would repeat, mm-hmm. you know, we you know, we just said that, Ma. <laughs> you yeah, know? yeah. So um, that, that kind of triggered everybody. So we kind of knew, but uh, Alzheimer's, e- even when she lived with us, it's like things you notice mm-hmm. and they happen gradually. But one day it's like, boom, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, you got to do something now, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and... Um, so when she moved in with us, she was still driving. Okay. She was still going to church every Sunday on her own. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was still very active in church. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, she went to, we, we knew we were going to have to take the keys away from her at some point. Okay. But, but mom, mom understood what was happening. Mm-hmm. And she she didn't fight it, which was a which okay. was a blessing. Yeah, she didn't. She knew things were going to happen, mm-hmm. and um, she knew that, like with her finances, mm-hmm. she knew that she couldn't handle that anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, she had a lot of medication. Mm-hmm. Uh, she knew. I mean, I think she came to me and said, "Glenn, I, I need help because it's too many pills. I don't know one mm-hmm. from the other." Mm-hmm. Um, but I think I think the most shocking one was she went. Uh, she was living with us. I think it's been a couple of years. Mm-hmm. Um, my uncle. Um, we have we have relatives. They have. She has two sisters mm-hmm. in California, so mm-hmm. they try to go out every few years. So mm-hmm. they drove out because he likes to drive, mm-hmm. and um, it was it was a little tough then. But you know, I, my uncle's older brother, mm-hmm. older her older brother knew 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 the situation. Mm-hmm. He he would come over from time to time and mm-hmm. help out. And when I was getting her ready to go and trying to help her pack, mm-hmm. and she just, you know, she would like pack the, not not a cell phone, she would pack the cordless phone. You know, it okay. was just, so I kind of had oh, to go through okay. her clothes and make sure she was packing appropriately, yeah. which was kind of weird, you yeah. know, <laughs> you uh-huh. know, for a son and, and a mom. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, when, when, when she got back, they were gone for about five weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, and she just couldn't, uh, I think before we knew we had to take the car, but mm-hmm. we had heard, you know, she would tell me, she's like, yeah. Or, I think like every Sunday we, we would be on pins and needles waiting for her to come home because we didn't know mm-hmm. if she was, you know, going out to dinner, you know, out mm-hmm. to lunch with someone mm-hmm. after mm-hmm. church and then the sun would be going down mm-hmm. and it's dark and, so that was making us nervous, mm-hmm. but when she got back from California, she and it, it might have been gradual, but she she would put her clothes on in in wrong you know like underclothes on top of outer oh, clothes wow. and things like that. So she really needed help kind mm-hmm. of figuring that out. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we knew she was still she was still in the house by herself to, in, during the day. So all okay. of us would leave the yeah. house, go to school, go to work, mm-hmm. and she would she would be there. Mm-hmm. Um, so when she came back, we knew that, yeah, we think it's time that she's somewhere during the day Mm -hmm. where people can see her. Okay. So, 
Um, my brother and I took her to a daycare, a senior, well, it wasn't necessarily senior, but people mm-hmm. who, who needed care. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she was still aware of things going on, mm-hmm. and but not fully grasping what was happening. But okay. when we took her to that place, she had a lot of questions. Mm. Why are we going here? Yeah, <laughs> right. I was, I was like, Mom, are we just going? I mean, we were literally just checking out places. Yeah. And so we went in, and the whole time she she was visibly, like, nervous. Mm. She's like, you're not leaving me here, are you? Mm. <laughs> right? Uh, I, I don't want to stay here. Mm. Uh, but but she eventually, you know, that's where she started her day time care my brother would keep her a couple days a week so I would drop her off on my way to work and then Mm -hmm. pick her up on my way home or Mm -hmm. some some kind of arrangement like that okay uh but we knew she needed that extra care and Mm -hmm. it was that same day that we took her to visit that I brought her home Mm -hmm. and I went to work Mm -hmm. and it just so happened my brother came by my house because he had another stop to make Mm -hmm. and uh, he came in the house and she was on the floor mm. and we don't know what happened. She passed out. He called, you know, 911. Mm-hmm. It was like, whoa, yeah. <laughs> you, you know, yeah. and it wasn't necessarily, we, we don't even really know what happened. Mm. We just know that, you know, we thank God my brother, he wasn't planning to drop by, Yeah, but yeah. we left the place. We, we went in different directions mm-hmm. and I left and he decided to come by. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we, we immediately made that change. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, there was a point where we, we had a nurse come in at night mm-hmm. with her. Mm-hmm. Uh, and not every night, but just a few nights a week. Mm-hmm. Cause it's very costly. Yeah, right. <laughs> so mm-hmm. even with, if with insurance, it's mm-hmm. just like, it's tremendous. Mm-hmm. Um, so we knew she needed help with mm-hmm. hygiene and, you know, mm-hmm. washing herself up and all of that thing. So so we knew that if we had someone come in every other night mm-hmm. we could we could we could work the rest. But yeah. And, yeah. And, and my, my kids my kids I believe uh grew up a lot, you know, with, with, with the whole experience because and they you know, um you know, some were more helpful than others, mm-hmm. some mm-hmm. didn't wanna really deal with grandma mm-hmm. that way and I, I understood yeah, that um, yeah. but you know uh, some had very you know eye opening moments where mm-hmm. they said yeah grandma really needs help yeah and I'm gonna I'm gonna help yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know yeah. so uh, you know just even if it was just spending time with her but uh, there's the um I forget what they call it now, but when, you know, they can't, Alzheimer's, one of the um, signs, not the signs, but one of the things you see is they mm-hmm. don't, they don't really understand night and day. Okay. So, um, mom would, I would, I would get up, I would hear her in the morning, mm-hmm. to early two in the morning, she'd be dressed and ready to go. Mm. And when it first happened, you, you know, you think you can... You can change her way of thinking, <laughs> but no, yeah. you, you really, you really can't. You, mm-hmm. you, all you can do is, is do your best to support them and not, mm-hmm. you know, it's upsetting, but mm-hmm. you can't be upset. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, okay. And sometimes, you know, I, I you know, it's kind of funny. I, I kind of tell this, this story that, you know, when mom would, she, she liked to wear hoodies sometimes mm-hmm. or she had a lot of hoodies. That's mm-hmm. all I can tell you. But, there there were nights like when it first started happening that she would be walking around in the house with a hoodie on all, all black <laughs> oh gosh and i remember getting up and thinking and looking out my bedroom door and peering down the stairs and thinking who is that right oh my god <laughs> someone's in our house <laughs> And, you know, I was like, okay, now I'm moving fast. You know, I had uh-huh. to assess the situation, right. but seeing someone moving in your house in the middle of the night in black right. is a little scary. Yeah, absolutely. So, but yeah, yeah. And sometimes she would open the door, which would set the alarm. So mm-hmm. we had to get the special locks to, mm-hmm. to prevent her from going mm-hmm. out. But, you know, her, her personality began to change a little bit, which, which okay. was a little, which was, which was hard. Mm. Um, because I knew this wasn't the... Mm-hmm. woman who raised me 
you know, mm-hmm. uh, and she could be at times very resistant, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, sometimes she could be physical, mm-hmm. which, you know, I've never known my right. mom to swing or hit yeah. or anything, but, yeah. but you know, those, those were things that were happening. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and they were happening with my kids and with my mm-hmm. wife, and it was just, and with me, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that's when we, you know, we wanted professional help for the nursing mm-hmm. and, and what have you. Um, but, I mean, all in all, we were still able, you know, there were r- limits on our life. Uh, you know, it's we couldn't just, we couldn't be spontaneous. Right. We couldn't. Hey, let's go do this. Yeah, or, yeah. So everything had to be planned, if, yeah. and, and we weren't we weren't uh, taking her with us on vacation anymore because we knew that was just it's one thing to be in your house, uh, but then it's another thing. Like if we had been in another yeah. setting, you know, and she had you know maybe it didn't have an alarm on the door, and right, she just went out right, the door, yeah. and then it's like yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we wouldn't know where to start, right, so right. so that wasn't really an option, and that's mm-hmm. you know that's when when my my brother stepped in, and mm-hmm. you know I mean you know and he would take care of her through the time mm-hmm. and we were gone. So, but but even even just like you know being prepared to wake up in the middle of the night and and talk to your mom and and. No, you got to go to work the next day. Yeah. <laughs> wow. You know, you know the kids still had activities. Yeah. We, you know, very active with music and sports mm-hmm. and and school. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Um, you know, sometimes that burden felt very heavy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you I know, can wow. so so yeah. so. How did you guys? pray you know what were your prayers like for your mom and just for you and Allison and your children um how did you guys lean on God with that so I mean I I I, I lean on God for everything mm-hmm. you know uh it, it it's a it's a it's an ongoing conversation <laughs> we're mm-hmm. we're having mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um but I I will say that she you know mom had had a lot of good friends mm-hmm. uh, that would call and even, you know, talk to her, mm-hmm. uh, even though she may not have known who, who they were half the time or, mm-hmm. you know, eventually. Mm-hmm. I mean, at first it was it was very solid and mm-hmm. she's like, oh, yeah, hey, Helen, you know, or, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. so, um, but, you know, they would, they would pray for us and the family. Um, we... Um, I mean, we we did not we 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 did we don't like come together and pray as a family, mm-hmm. right, except to eat, of course. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. but uh, but individually, you know, I I I pray for for my strength as well because, you know, at first I wanted I wanted God to perform a miracle. You yeah, know? I was like, God, come on. Yeah. You know? <laughs> She's been such a good soldier right, for you her right. whole life, yep. and uh-huh. I mean, you know, this just wasn't the way. You know, I, I actually, I wanted my mom to move in with us eventually. Uh-huh. At, you know, uh, once we moved, mm-hmm. you know, I didn't mm-hmm. expect the timeline to be as mm-hmm. it was, mm-hmm. but but I just figured that's the way. You know, she would be with us when she left. Right, right. Um, and so I, I won't say I was upset with God. Well. I think I was a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, man, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. this is the time we've been looking forward to, and now we we can't really enjoy it like we mm-hmm. we like I wanted mm-hmm. it to be. But again, mm-hmm. God's plan is is not our plan, yeah. <laughs> you know. Right. So, um, but you know, so so sometimes I would spend hours on the internet looking for you know cures, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. you know. It's, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not there, mm-hmm. but we did, you know, we did participate in the Alzheimer's walks and things like that, okay. just to be around people mm-hmm. who were kind of going through the same thing. Mm-hmm. And we took mom with us, and mm-hmm. you know, sometimes we pushed her in a wheel- wheelchair or mm-hmm. whatever, whatever the case may be, because you know she wasn't into walking a lot, you mm-hmm. know, at a certain point. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, that's. Um, I mean, I, I, I eventually understood Mm -hmm. (laughs) and I stopped hanging out on the internet looking for you know there's people out there oh just just take 
these three pills for three weeks and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it'll go away, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> no. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then when you actually try to find them, it's like, you're not really there. Right. Who are you? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, and then, I mean, I'm glad I didn't get pulled in anything deeply yeah. enough to, you know, spend a fortune trying right. to do it. But right. I, it, was, it was also very disappointing mm-hmm. to go see the doctors because mm-hmm. <laughs> they always wanted to see her, who, whatever the doctor was. I think doctors, if you're over a certain age, they, they always want you to come back in four weeks. And it's like, um, why? Right. You know, uh, yeah. Why is she coming back in four weeks? Right. But even the neurologist, it's like we would take, we would see her, him regularly, uh, but and she was taking these medications for all, you know, for memory and, mm-hmm. and whatnot. I was like, is this doing anything? Mm. He said, it may be slowing it down. So, you know, it's, it, you know, it wasn't doing anything to help. I mean, I, again, being with her every day. Right. You would notice the changes, if anything. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, I mean, really, they're just, you know, in a lot of cases, doctors are there just to treat the symptoms. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. And they only can do what mm-hmm. med- medical um, <laughs> technology or advancements right. allow them right. Right. to do. Mm-hmm. So I, I felt I felt like just I mean, and the medicine was expensive. Mm. Uh, I learned a lot about the uh, Medicare system, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. So and you know uh, they 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 did do their best to to lessen the burden mm-hmm. but when you enter a certain level mm-hmm. I found about this thing called uh, it, it was it, I literally called and I said why why is her benefit what happened to it mm-hmm. this mm-hmm. month and they said you're you're in the you ever heard of the the donut phase I was oh like what gosh. are you talking about okay but basically they're saying they'll they'll you know uh, the insurance pays for your medications up to this point and then you mm-hmm. have a gap for like I don't know for a certain amount of money that you have to pay instead of paying you know 30 mm-hmm. percent you're paying 70 percent and then but so they call it the, the donut because you have that gap in the middle, but it does pick up later, and 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 it's based on the year. And so I'm finding out all of this yeah, firsthand, and I'm yeah. trying to budget her money, right. and I'm trying to budget her, you know, handle her life right. because you're literally handling yeah, their life, their yeah. finances, their medic, yeah. medical, anything that comes yeah. up. Mm-hmm. And um, that was that was hard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, uh, but I learned about it and I was ready for it the next year when it came mm-hmm. around. So, mm-hmm. um, but just, you know, y- again, you're, you're in charge of their life. Anything legal comes up, anything, you know, just everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, mm. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's definitely a lot. Um, so you definitely talked about, you know, the adjustments, some of the adjustments mm-hmm. that you and your family had to make. Um, you know, how how were you still able to commit to your children's extracurricular while still taking care of your mom? Yeah, it it's a... Uh, I mean, for one, we, we had a we, we had a good sized family. Mm-hmm. So it it's not like um uh, all of us did everything at the same time. So Mm -hmm. it might've been, you know, this time Allison's going to be home Mm -hmm. with mom and I'm going to take the kids. Often it depended on where it was and Mm -hmm. how far we had to go. Mm -hmm. But we, we knew our commitment was to our kids Mm -hmm. and to my mom. Yeah. So we, we had to make it work. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that was calling in family saying, Hey, we got to do this. Mm -hmm. We need Mm -hmm. you to be with mom for a few hours. So, Mm -hmm. and it didn't, it didn't always, it wasn't always easy. It didn't always work out exactly as Mm -hmm. planned. Um, But, you know, for the most part, mom was not hard to deal with. It was just, it's, it's kind of a drain when, when, um, you have, for me, you know, just kind of the repetitive nature of, and, and, and keeping your cool, <laughs> you know, cause you can't, you, I mean, you should always keep your cool anyway, mm-hmm. but, mm-hmm. but 
the the situations that came up were not. Um, it, it it doesn't help the the situation to to let your emotions you know take control and yeah. you know fuss and whatever yeah. <laughs> you know all yeah. of that so but it it can be draining as well because you're not because sometimes you're keeping them in yeah you're suppressing you're suppressing yeah. them yeah, yeah 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 but again I mean you know we we had we had family members mm-hmm. we we did try to get her out but that that's a challenge mm-hmm. as well mm-hmm. we, we've. Uh, we've taken her to like family picnics and things, mm-hmm. and and for a long time, people might not have even believe she had Alzheimer's because mm-hmm. she was good at talking. Okay, uh, they might have noticed the repeating and thought, yeah. well, okay, she repeats a little bit. But mm-hmm. but when you tell them, they're like, I just had a conversation with her. She seemed to know who I was, and I was like, okay, yeah, <laughs> right, right. It's like because she's she's she's. She's good at it. I don't. Yeah. I don't know what to say, but yeah, but I, yeah. I mean, she does try to. I don't think she was trying to hide it. I think she was just being being kind. Yeah. You know, like you said, she always was was that way. So she did keep yeah. that, you know, yeah. with her. So wow. Yeah. Now, was there ever a point where she didn't remember who you or your family were? There were there were times. Yeah. Um. Mm. Wow. Well, I hope that you have enjoyed this episode titled Being a Husband and Dad Caring for My Mom with Alzheimer's featuring Glenn Wiggins. If you are ready to tune in for part two, you'll have to come back next Thursday, November 14th at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on Facebook, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify, and anywhere you can find audio-only platforms, you will see Breakthrough Conversations. Go ahead and like this episode. Go ahead and leave a comment letting us know something that stood out for you today. And also share this with others, others who are in Glenn's shoes, so that they can be encouraged to know that they are not alone. If you haven't yet, go ahead and subscribe to Breakthrough Conversations. In the meantime, enjoy your day and be blessed.